specialist subject yourself to start with. Oh, God. What's the biggest match you've ever played in? Um. Oh, jeez. That's a great question. I don't know. I don't think there's ever been any real standouts. It's a bit sad, really, isn't it? Um, <laughs> until now. Yeah, until this one. Well, that, that's where I was going to come on to, because, you know, whatever the previous answer was... Is, it's is now this one, yeah. Bit. Well, if I'm picked, wait and see. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, hopefully I play, but you never know until you, you get the team sheet, so... Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's definitely going to be the, the biggest game of my career so far, yeah. By uh, a long stretch, probably. Has that been one of the big topics of conversation on the training ground this week? You know, do you think he's going to go strong? Do you think he's going to keep it, you know, as usual? Uh, no, not really. I've not spoken to anyone about it. I've just spoke to myself about it more, more than anyone else. Um, laying in bed last night at 3 o'clock thinking, am I going to play? Am I not going to play? Am I going to play? Um, but no, I think uh, all the lads are obviously looking forward to it and um, whatever team the gaffer selects, it'll be one that he, he wants to win the game. But the fact you are thinking about it in those terms shows how much it would mean to you to play then? Yeah, of course. Um, we've had season tickets in the family for like 40 years. Um, I've been going to, to the match since I was a little boy, since I can remember, uh, with my granddad then with my dad and other family members so <clears throat> um, I've like been the fan sitting in the stands watching United grow up like with all the teams the Rooney's the Tevez Ronaldo um, Skulls Keane all, all those guys so um, yeah it'd be, a, it'd be a dream come true for me really to, to play at Old Trafford um, obviously it's not for my United but it's still it's still at Old Trafford and against my United so um, it will be a big thing for me and hopefully I got that chance so you you must have jumped up for joy, did you? When you, you yeah, I was in. The draw. <laughs> I was I was having a Sunday dinner at uh, Pinch and Thought Paul. Yeah. And um, I was watching it on Sky Go, and I was a little bit behind. So then I had like seven or eight messages come through, and I seen like Man United at home, and then I had like loads of messages. So I was like, no way. <laughs> and then and obviously I found out on just uh, just little fist pump in the in the restaurant on my own. So clearly you are, um, and everyone will be familiar with Old Trafford. You know, yeah. it will have been there at some stage. But how, how different do you think it's going to be to be potentially out there on the green bit in the middle, as opposed to just being in the ground? Yeah, I think it's totally different. Uh, I think that's the same with any ground. Once you're actually on the pitch, you don't really, and when you're playing, you don't really take in your surroundings as much. Um, you kind of just obviously focus on the game. Um, but if I do play, it's one of those things where I don't want to be in awe of my surroundings and who I'm possibly playing against. It's kind of it's still another game. We've got to be ambitious and and go there with the th thought of we're trying to win the game. So as much as I'm looking forward to it, I don't want to be <clears throat> and don't want the lads to be overawed by the situation. And well, obviously they're going to be favourites. I, I imagine mm. that you, none of you are going to go into this lacking confidence, are you? Bearing in mind the way you've been going. Uh, I don't think so. I can't speak for the other lads, but. Um, I'm confident in the, in the team and the way we've been playing, and <clears throat> I think we can we can go there and hopefully put a, a good account of ourselves. Obviously, like I said before, we probably aren't the favourites, like you said. Um, but I think we've got to go there with the with the thought that we can, like an ambition, that we can win the game. Otherwise, <laughs> what's the point in us turning up? Um, so no, it'll be it'll be one to, to savour and one to relish, but um, we don't really have anything to lose. I don't think. Do you think they might actually be looking at you, uh, you know, as a team, not you personally, but, but looking at, at you and, and thinking, well, could probably do without this. Do you know what I mean? A team who are playing with confidence, who are going well, and, and you know, will come fancying the chances. Um, I don't know. I don't think. I don't know. The Man United players, and um, they probably they they should know that they they are better players than us. Um, that's why they're at Manchester United. Um, so I don't think there will be. Players there that will be thinking, oh, I don't want to play at Mills because they play for Man United, so they should have um, full full belief in themselves. You will have huge backing, though. I mean, nine and a half thousand yeah. making the journey from from Teesside. That that has got to make a difference to the way you all feel, hasn't it? Yeah, it's costing it. Um, I'm a bit. I know the gaff said it before. I'm a bit similar. Uh, I love away games. 
it's kind of like a, a siege mentality, and um, which is a bit of a, a bigger backing this time. Obviously, with ten thousand, but we're going into their patch, and obviously, not many people are going to give us the the chance of, of winning the game. So we've got to kind of take that um, take that mentality that it's us against the world, and, and see what happens. And there'll be what what is it, nine thousand? So we'll say this. Nine, nine and a half. Yeah, nine and a half thousand plus the. 30 squad members that there are so we'll be going in and attacking it the best we best we can have you ever played in front of such a big away following before um what, 9 thousand yeah no no uh it's unheard of really isn't it um yeah it's like it's like, it's like I said when i first come to the club it's a massive club and it's only been uh cemented the fact the the season this season and the away from we've had the home the home games that the supporters have, have been coming to in droves and it's one that I've uh, I've really enjoyed and um, I've tried to take advantage of. You've got ground to make up now as well since the weekend. Andras Sporar's moved one ahead of you. You are no longer the top scorer. Yeah. Um, hopefully gets a few more than me before the end of the season. Um, no, Andras is he's Slovenian. He? Uh, no, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a great player and he's a good lad and. Um, I know he spoke to I think Fernandez already asking for shirts, so he might have got the uh, edge on us with that one as well. But um, now nah, he's uh, he's doing well and hopefully he can continue. Have you been? Have you all been singing that song to him? Or does that that must follow him round when he goes to the shops? I, I sing it everywhere. I sing it at home. <laughs> um, I always whenever he puts them on Instagram, I always just send him a message saying he's Slovenian. It's just my thing at the minute. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, best of luck. Enjoy it. Cheers. Cheers, my Simon, who's just next to him. Okay. Simon. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> Hi, mate. You're right. Okay. It's supposed to be like that. It's quite loud, Simon, coming <laughs> through. I don't know. Your mic is quite loud. Yeah, so I'm probably sharing a bit as well. Is that better? Yeah, yeah that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so just from what you've been saying there, Matt, <clears throat> interesting. Do you th- do you think it's going to feel different being out on that pitch when you look around you and there's maybe Paul Pogba, maybe Ronaldo, um, maybe Bruno Fernandez, sort of in your orbit? Is, is it going to feel different to you that? Uh, it'll probably be a little bit surreal. Obviously, you're only usually watching them on TV. Um, obviously, I was <clears throat> growing up as a United fan, like Ronaldo was. Him and Rooney were my, my two players, so if we had the chance to like go up against him, that would be probably the biggest one where like, what's going on here. Um, but it's like I said before, I, I want to be excited, but at the same time, I don't want to hype it up too much and then not focus on the on the match in hand. So um, I think it's a, a mixture of both. Obviously, it will be surreal. I'm not used to play, used to playing against like the likes of Varane, Pogba, Ronaldo, who've achieved so much in the game. But it's a challenge that hopefully they put them out and I can play, and it's one that I look forward to. Um, obviously, Friday night, huge crowds, live TV audience. Is is that do those factors sort of weigh on players' minds, or are they things you look forward to? Um, I think everyone's different. Everyone feels pressures and stuff in different ways. But I think if I was younger, I'd probably feel the pressure. But uh, now I've matured a bit, I think, and um, these things are just part and parcel of the game. Obviously, seventy-five thousands. Massive amount of people to be watching one one football game. Um, I've not played in front of a crowd that big. Played at Ibrox, but that's only I think fifty five. So um, yeah, this will definitely be the biggest occasion for me. And obviously, as I said, growing up as a United fan, it uh, makes it that bit that bit better. Um, just sum up the feeling. It, it sort of looks from the outside as, as if things are going very well. There, you had a long and beaten run, then one setback, but then you you won again straight away. Very importantly, it, it looks like everything is heading in the right direction. There, yeah, we've had a good run of results. Um, disappointing uh, at Blackburn to play the way we did, especially in the first half. Obviously, we've we've said that already, um, but it was good to to show a reaction to a setback that we've had because we hadn't had that under this manager. Um, and we managed to pull out probably not a fantastic performance, but we got the three points, which is obviously the most important thing. So um, it was good to get back to winning ways. It was kind of like we'd forgotten how how it felt like to lose, uh, and I certainly didn't like it. So now it was good to get back to winning. Uh, that'll do for me. Apologies for shouting. Good luck. It's, it's fine. Just excited. <laughs> uh, look north in the top right. 
Hello, Matt. It's uh, Jerry up north in Newcastle. Hi, mate. Um, everybody knows how tight it is in the playoff positions at the moment. So here's a, a very unoriginal question for you. Do you think the fans would trade a really good cup run for the greater certainty of uh, getting a nailed on top six position? Um, if I was a fan, I would rather have the top six position than a good cup run, personally. But that is my personal preference, so... I'll let everyone else decide when they watch this interview. So why do you think that is when obviously the cup still means so much to so many people, especially over a certain age? I think over a longevity point of view for the club and, and for myself, um, if we can put together a good run and get the possibility of playing the Premier League next season, then I can play against Man United twice instead of just once and not have a good cup run. So um, that's my thinking behind it. And you mentioned your maturity, obviously, you know, you're one of the senior players now. Do you think, given your experience at Manchester, some of the younger players will be looking to you, for example, in not getting intimidated by that massive crowd this weekend? Uh, senior. Oh. <laughs> um, I still think I'm 18. Um, possibly, yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't really see myself as like a, a, a leader figure as such. Um, that, but um, if the players are looking to me, um, then yeah, I'll just I'll just be going about my normal business. I'll try and treat it as normal normal game as possible. Um, but yeah, I think me and Duncan spoke about it because Duncan was in the same age group as me growing up at United. Um, they used to call him the silent assassin, Tony Whelan, the academy director at the time, because he always used to like coming at the back and just knock it in. Um, we were laughing about it how like we've kind of gone on our different journeys and then come back together and now we'll be back at United again so I'll probably have a little <coughs> chat with Duncan as we're walking out and have a little laugh about it so that'll be cool Alright Matt thank you very much indeed good luck You're Cheers welcome. Simon Peach who's just under there Simon Hi there. Morning Morning um, I was just interested to know if any of the lads who were at United are still there or I guess people at the club um, I'm not quite sure to be honest um, from my age group there was me, Duncan, as I said, Tom Lawrence, who's at Derby, um, Tyler Blackett, who's playing in the MLS now at Cincinnati, I think. Um, apart from that, um, I think the age the age group above was probably uh, a more uh, a better age than ours. They had Will Keane, Paul Pogba, Ravel Morrison, Jesse Lingard, uh, Lionel Cole, players like that, Michael Keane. So. The year above was probably the one that they targeted as uh, a better achieving group than ours. Um, and uh, the staff wise, I'm not sure if anyone's still there or not. I've not really kept in contact. I got released when I was 14, so it was quite a long time ago now. Um, but no, I remember when I went back when I was 16 uh, for Huddersfield Town, and it was like a redemption for me. We, uh, we beat them 2-0 when I scored, so I mean, I'd take that again, but uh, we'll see what happens. I was going to say, uh, you always hear about players being released by clubs, but when it's your boyhood team and you're 14, it must be a complete gut punch. Has it been something that's fueled you through the years? Definitely when I was younger. Um, I remember when they released me, being sat in the room with my dad. I just cried my eyes out when they told me. I kind of knew it was coming as I was walking up the steps. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, I still remember that day. I went to the Trafford Centre after. My dad had just got a new Nissan Micra, so I hated that car. Um, went went to I think went for an Indian or something. It was weird because it was like the afternoon. But um, yeah, for the next like two or three years while I was at Huddersfield, um, trying to get my scholarship, I just kind of used that as motivation as a kid to kind of uh, try and try and get a professional contract. And I was fortunate enough to to do so. Out of interest as a, as a United fan, what what do you make of the the current state of play? Um. Obviously, it's a far cry from when I was going to watch uh, more regularly, uh, f five, ten years ago now, under Ferguson. Um, I don't know. It's just, I think it's well documented what's, obviously, the results, etc. Changing the manager, changing personnel, and it's, nothing seems to be sticking at the minute. So, um, I, I can't tell you the, the answers. Otherwise, I won't be sat here, I might be sat in there. The, the manager's off manager's office at Man United, but um, hopefully as a club they can turn it around and um, 
be back to the Manchester United that they were before. About this, finally for me, about this time last year, your manager oversaw quite an impressive and surprise victory at Old Trafford. He, he knows what it takes to to hurt, hurt Man United. I mean, he did it even in the home games. You gave him a scare at Bramble Lane. So you believe he's the kind of guy that can get his master plan and get you to get that famous win? Yeah, I think so. I think um, him and Nilly will will uh, work together and look at the a tactical plan for us to play to play with and, and give it our best shot. Um, I know he'll probably be thinking that we have to go there with the ambition to win. That's the character that he has, and he won't just seeing it as a day out. It's a game of football, and like I said before, we have the ambition to to go and win each game. I think it's the whole point of playing to be competitive and and to win. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens, and if it does, it'll be a, be a good night. Good luck. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. I will. Cheers, Matty. Morning, Matt. You okay? Yeah, you. Yeah, my good thanks. Um, just wanted to hark back to a couple of weeks ago against Reddit mm-hmm. after he scored those two goals. He went back out onto the pitch in front of the Red faction. Clearly, you were enjoying yourself. Mm-hmm. Are you already, I mean, don't want to get too ahead of myself, but are you already visualising moments like that at Old Trafford? I, I was doing it last night in bed. I was, I was doing that in bed last night. Uh, I'd be lying if I, if I said I hadn't. Um, it is... It's what football's all about, like the emotion and and moments like that. So um, I can visualise them if they happen or not. We'll wait and see. But um, yeah, for now I'm just ready for training today. Now I'm focusing on the game and uh, seeing seeing what the gaffer and Ellie have in store for us. Because you mentioned Andras has got his song. Obviously, his he's Slovenian. You've got yeah. your own song, and I'm sure you I'm sure you love that. My barber's buzzing. Um, absolutely buzzing. Uh, got a real grooming in your in your arm if anyone wants, wants to get the haircut there. And uh no, he's he's very impressed by by the chat. that was it was nice. He's, he's a few lads, it's not just mine, it's a few. Is it is he who else is it? The manager. The manager. And Paddy in it. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I won't call it just my chant, it's like a it's a middle of FC chant. Suppose the um is it is it funny that they're complimenting your hair <laughs> and the fact that you score a belt as he didn't probably didn't expect that when he first came at the club. No. Um I think the last compliment I had about my hair, some geezer messaged me on Twitter when I was at Accrington. <laughs> oh, did we play? Was it Plymouth away? And he asked what conditioner I used. <laughs> oh, genuinely. Um Which so one is it? It's mostly just sweat half the time, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so um I said to him, it's just just natural, mate. Like I, I don't really use any certain type of product. Uh, but yeah, since then I've not really had any compliments apart from apart from him. So that was that was nice. Yeah, that one. Cheers, guys. <laughs> um, when you first came to the club, um, Neil Warner waxed lyrical about how you could become a potential captain at this club one day. And he's got all and you've got all the hallmarks to do that. Just in your words. I know you mentioned you probably feel as though you're still an 18 year old kid and you yeah. don't feel like that senior man. But just in your words, what what a captain, what the qualities of a captain are? Uh, I think there's different types. Me and Johnny have spoke about this uh, quite recently. Um, Johnny's quite, he's not one to to bark and shout, but he leads by example on the field, and it's kind of following his actions rather than his words. And then obviously you have the the leaders that. Obviously, they do have the the show by actions, but they are very vocal as well in, in the dressing room and, and and around the place. So, I think it, there's there's a few a few different types of leaders. Obviously, ones that just produce on the field, and you kind of like that's what we need to do. Or there's the ones that kind of dictate you on the pitch by and on the training field with with words and and motivation and stuff like that. Just finally for me, um, you haven't had much sleep by the sounds of what you're saying. Are you expecting a few more sleepless nights and excitement for for, 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 for Friday? I mean, who's sweating now? I've got two kids, so um, <laughs> they they do the fair share of keeping me up at night. But um, yeah, I was we'll be probably we'll be staying Thursday night and then Friday we'll have obviously all day in the hotel and usually I'll have a sleep. But I don't know how successful my attempts are at going to be trying to go to sleep. So. I usually listen to a Joe Rogan podcast and it usually sends me off to sleep. Um, but I just don't feel like it's going to work. <laughs> Fingers crossed you get your shirt eye. Thanks for your time, Thanks, man. Mate. Good luck, Friday. Cheers, Paul. Great.
Hi, I'm Matt. Hi, mate. All right. Hi, yeah. Um, yeah, I just you've mentioned there when you know you, you how it felt when you were released from Man United Academy when you were 14. I mean, I don't know, you know, when what age you were when you first went into that academy, but you know, as a as a Man United fan as well, what were your experiences overall of your time in that academy? Uh, it was unbelievable to be fair. Um, I had so many good opportunities, probably ones that I took for granted as a kid because it was just like normal because it was what I'd been doing the whole time. I joined when I was eight. I went to Switzerland, Andorra, Barcelona twice, um, playing against like big European clubs, obviously at young ages, but it was just something that I kind of thought was normal. Um, and then they tried to, they actually tried to release me twice, so <laughs> once when I was 11, and then I did all right for, I said, oh, can I stay on anywhere and just keep training? And I did all right, so they kept me. And then they finally got, got rid of me at 14. Um, but no, I've, I've still got a couple of friends, obviously, Duncan was in my age group, but um, I still speak to a couple of lads, keep in touch with them um, from when we were there together. So, uh, yeah, I've got nothing but good things to say about my time that I had there. Yeah, brilliant. And, and do you feel, even now looking back, that the kind of coaching you got then kind of, you know, helped you now in your career, in your senior career? Yeah, I think so. Um, <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> my dad like keeps a big scrapbook, um, and I think there was one from when I was like under 11s. And like all my physical, so the marquee scores, and all my physical scores like really good. Like I think it was one to four, and they were all like fours and threes. Then it got to technical, and it was kind of like ones and twos, and all really low. And I was like, probably something that I need to work on. And uh, Rene Mullenstein, you might not have heard of him. He just come to the yeah, club. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that was his first year when I was under nines. So it was all really technical, and I think that probably helped me looking back now. Um, obviously being a, a bigger, a bigger guy and. Just trying to be better on the ball. Um, it's taken work on my own as well. That once I got released from United, I kind of decided that I was going to do work on my own, practice after school and stuff. And it's something that I've always tried to tried to work on because it was never my strongest suit, I guess. Yeah, and, and it's interesting you talk about that that kind of technical ability because it's something that you know Chris Wilder appears to like and appears to like in you as well. I mean, you know, how much are you enjoying? The, the style of football that you're now playing under this manager? It's really enjoyable, full throttle, intense, training's intense, but um, you come to game day and, and it's enjoyable. You've got a lot of the ball, um, it's attacking, it's front foot, it's and, and it wins you matches at the end of the day, so um, I think it'd be, it'd be a foolish that they didn't enjoy it because it's what everyone wants to see and it's getting results at the same time, so it's effective. Yeah, and, and he's spoken to us about kind of the the intricacies of of the midfield in particular, and the kind of you know the roles that he asks of you of yeah. you two in the in the eight positions in particular, mm -hmm. uh, both in and out of possession. I mean, how hard or easy was that when he first came in, and he was kind of throwing all these intricate details at you? Um, it was alright to be fair. <laughs> I didn't find it too <laughs> difficult. Um, it was. It, I think they put the points across really well and made it quite simple for us to understand. Um, it was a totally different way of playing, but um, I think the performances showed and the results showed that we kind of took that on board quite well and understood what they were trying to get across pretty quickly. Um, it's one that I really enjoy, um, which help, obviously helps take it on board quicker and um, I just want us to get better at it now. I think there's always room for improvement and maybe possibly the last two or three performances haven't been quite as on song as, as previous, but um, it's, it's one that we can keep building on and, and keep working at. Brilliant. Thanks, Matt, and good luck Friday. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Uh, Oscar. Morning, Matt. Hi, mate. You all right? Very well, thank you. Good. Um, Matt, just going, going back to um, when you were released by Manchester United at 14, I mean, yeah. did, it, did it feel like your football dream and, and your chance of making it as a pro were over? Uh, yeah, at that time it did. For that two or three days, it was like I've, I've let myself down, let my family down, kind of thing. I remember that quite strongly. Um, but then after that, it was kind of right. I'm going to go to Huddersfield and and try my luck there. And uh, <laughs> obviously, I was used to Carrington, which was like a big complex of like the best pitches, the best facilities. And then I went to Huddersfield Town, Leeds Road. It was absolutely chucking it down. And we were doing this passing drill. I was doing it with my best mate. Uh, sin and it was chucking it down and it was muddy and like my boots and, and my feet were soaking I was just like what have I done here but um, 
it, it stood me in good stead and unfortunately I got to to uh, achieve my dream of, of becoming a footballer, which I'm lucky enough to do now. Yeah, so in just, in just the last one, what was your, your favourite game watching as a fan at Old Trafford? What, what sticks out? Um, the, the, the Aston Villa Makeda game sticks out just because of, but the one that I remember the most is the Ronaldo hat trick, Real Madrid, when they, they won the game but they got knocked out. Because yeah. um, I remember everyone just giving them standard stand innovation. And, um, yeah. That, that one sticks out, or maybe skulls against Barcelona in the semi-final, where they were just defending for for ninety minutes, but he came up with that absolute worldly. Yeah. So one of those three. Will you be making a beeline for Ronaldo at full time to, to get a shirt? <laughs> I'm making a beeline for for Ronaldo for sure, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, Good luck, pal. Thank you. Yeah, Ian. Hi, mate. Hi, how are you? Yeah, hi. <laughs> Good. Um, Manchester United have got fans all over the world, but not too many from across the Pennines in, in, in Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, but I've, I've checked out, it says some sites say you were born in Leeds, some in Huddersfield, but yeah. you, you're obviously a Yorkshire. Uh, how did you become a Manchester United fan? Uh, yeah, so I was born in Leeds, so that makes it even worse. Uh, yeah. One of the media guys uh, here, Juicy, is from Leeds, is a massive Leeds fan. Um, so. He was literally the first person I met, and he knew that I was from Leeds, but he didn't know I was a Man United fan. So it was kind of came up in conversation on the way to to meeting the squad in Cornwall, and he wasn't best pleased. Um, but most of my family were born in Ashton, underline in the Saddleworth region. So they all grew up being United fans. My granddad had been going to United since he was like six, so I didn't really have a choice um, to to be a Man United fan, and that's that's all I've known really. Did you get to stick at school? Uh, nah. No. Nah? Nah. Fair nah. The, the other question I was going to ask you, you, you mentioned you got no F real standout FA Cup memories, So, but two years ago you you, you were in the Rotherham side that played at uh, Goodison Park yeah. and put a pretty good show. <laughs> yeah. Why does that memory not stand out? We lost. Fair enough. Yeah, we, we lost. Um, yeah, I don't, I, that, yeah, I don't know why that didn't come to mind. I put, Big ground, Premier League, but there was no fans in. We lost. Course, it's, yeah. it's not the same, is it? It's a, of course because it was behind closed doors. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. All the very best tomorrow, then. Mark. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, uh, Stuart. Bottom left. Hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. You right? Good, you? Yes, good. Thank you. Good. Um, I just wanted to ask it. You know, as you, as you mentioned, you've had yourself sort of, um, first set back under under Chris the other week. What, yeah. what was that like? You know, what, what have you learned about what he's like in defeat? Uh, he doesn't take kindly to it. Um, and I think he gave us a, a brushing down, dusting down, which we needed. Uh, I think he was probably more annoyed with the manner of our performance in the first half rather than, well, obviously he wasn't happy with the result, but it was I think it was the manner in which we played that probably annoyed him more. Um, but... Like I said, it, it's driving us on to, to become better players, better team, and produce better results. So sometimes you need these setbacks to kind of make you realise, look, we need to we need to work even harder. And I think that's what it's done. And training's been good, and we've got to enjoy this week now and enjoy the game on Friday night. Because I mean, he's, he's always had this reputation as being very forthright and you know not afraid to call people out when mm -hmm. when they're when they're not meeting his standards. Do you, do you like that sort of approach from him? Well, I think honesty is always the best policy. There's no point uh, hiding around other facts or beating around the bush. Just tell us straight and we can work on it. So, yeah, I think it's the best way to be. I think that's what the players would prefer rather than being told it's all rose when we all know it's not. So, yeah. And and, and I guess it's probably, um, probably ramped home the message that while other people might be talking about Friday as a free hit and... As you said, the league's more important. You still won't be happy if you if you lose if you don't perform. Will you? No, of course not. I think we all want to put on a good performance. You don't want to go to Old Trafford and and let and let yourselves down and suffer in front of ten thousand people and for yourself. I don't, I don't want to go to Old Trafford and have an absolute stinker. I want to enjoy it and know that I've I've given it my all and, and played well. So um, yeah, hopefully we can we can produce it as a team and as individuals and hopefully never know get a good result. Brilliant. Well, thanks for your time. Enjoy. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Cheers, you. And just Rob to finish. Just Hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. You all right? 
Do you think that the um, the atmosphere and the game and everything at Man United can can also inspire you uh, and, and and take you forward at QPR and Derby and all and all the league games? Uh, possibly, yeah. It gives us a little taste of what we could possibly have in store for ourselves pretty much every week if we if we do what we aim to do this season, which is promotion. Uh, like I said before, um, it gives us the opportunity to play there twice rather than just in a FA Cup game. Um, it would be it's what we all want at the football club to be promoted this season and we've put ourselves in with a chance of, of possibly doing that but there's still an awful long way to go and a lot of games to be played so these are the teams that are just as hungry as us to get into those positions and we have to fight harder and play better than them to, to get there. And it's already been mentioned this while this um, record against Man United uh, at Old Trafford yeah. but are you all aware that of, of just how many victories Middlesbrough have had against Man United in, in, in recent years and, and historically? We've, we've met in the Cups many times and, and we've knocked them out several times. Yeah, I, I remember the last game in the Carabao Cup. Um, I remember what, I think that was on Sky. I'm sure it was. Um, so, yeah, I probably don't look at them with as much uh, pride and joy as you guys do because I was actually supporting the other team. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, it's always a good omen, hopefully, and it'd be nice if we could uh, follow on from that with another one. And uh, so finally for me, are you going to keep on scoring these great late goals in, in matches? Uh, it'd be nice to be like 3 up at half-time, It's uh, <laughs> but there is no better feeling. Um, but I mean, there's no worse feeling when you miss an absolute sitter at the end as well to get a draw, so uh, football's all about the up and downs and there's highs and there's lows where you just got to try and stay level-headed and keep producing the performances and the results as I've been saying I know it's really cliche but it's the simple matter of the fact at the end of the day so hopefully we can we can achieve that